Hey everyone, welcome to Asian Pride, the place where we chat about all things Asian, with a dash of pride and a whole lot of spice. I'm your host, and today, we're embarking on a journey, comparing the gay experience in two fascinating countries, China and Japan. So, buckle up, and let's dive into this colorful exploration with a bit of humor, some heartfelt moments, and, of course, plenty of sass. Let's start with history. In China, we see a complex past with homosexuality. It's been there, done that, and got the ancient poetry to prove it. Meanwhile, in Japan, it's like they've been painting rainbows since the samurai era. Talk about being ahead of the curve. Legally speaking, China and Japan are like that couple who can't decide on a restaurant. Neither has legalized same-sex marriage, but they're both kind of flirting with the idea. It's like, make up your minds already. Public perception? Oh boy, here's where it gets spicy. In China, it's like playing hide and seek, I know you're there, but let's pretend you're not. Japan, on the other hand, is more like, cool story, bro, but let's keep it low key, okay? Media representation, now we're talking. China's like that strict parent, you can be on TV, but only if you behave. Japan? It's anime heaven with a side of subtlety. You've got your queer characters, but they're often hidden in plain sight. The dating scene is a whole other soap opera. In China, it's all about the apps, baby. But you gotta watch out for those catfishes. Japan is more about the subtle glances and the unspoken, let's hang out, at a local izakaya. Pride celebrations, anyone? China's like, what pride? It's more underground and hush-hush. Japan? They've got their rainbows out, but it's more cute and commercial than political. Family dynamics, oh, the drama. In China, it's all about, what will the neighbors say? Meanwhile, in Japan, it's more like, let's not talk about it at dinner, okay? Workplace vibes, in China, it's the classic, don't ask, don't tell. Japan is a bit more open, but still, it's like navigating a minefield in a tutu. Community support is key, right? In China, it's like finding a secret club. Once you're in, you're in. Japan? It's more organized, with groups and events, but still keeping it on the down low. Fashion and stereotypes, this one's a riot. In China, if you're too flamboyant, it's like setting off fireworks at a library. Japan? They've got entire districts where you can strut your stuff, but it's more cosplay than everyday wear. Online, the game changes. China's internet is like a fortress with secret tunnels. You've got to know where to look. Japan is all about the subtle hints on mainstream platforms, plus a thriving underground scene. Activism, anyone? In China, it's like being a ninja, stealthy and under the radar. Japan's activists are more visible, but it's like they're dancing on a tightrope. Gotta keep that balance. Cultural nuances, oh, the subtleties. In China, it's all about reading between the lines. Japan? It's an art form, knowing when to speak and when to just sip your tea. The impact of international influence is fascinating. China often seems like it's in a bubble, resistant to outside pressure. Japan, however, is like that friend who's always checking out what's trendy overseas and subtly incorporating it. Finally, the journey towards acceptance. In China, it's a slow, winding path with many hurdles. Japan's journey is more like a series of small steps, a polite, quiet march towards progress. And there you have it, folks, a whirlwind tour of being gay in China and Japan. From hidden histories to modern struggles, it's a tale of two cultures, each with its own flavor. Remember, whether you're sipping tea in Tokyo or navigating the alleys of Beijing, your story is valid, your journey is important, and your pride is your strength. Thanks for tuning in to Asian Pride. Until next time, this has been your dose of culture, humor, and sass. Don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe for more stories from the heart of Asia. Stay awesome, stay